Hey, it's Tom from Inspiration My Lorks. And in this update, we're going to go over um, kind of the status of where things stand with the new machines uh, and some upcoming projects and events. Well, that sounded a little rushed, didn't it? Okay, so we finally have all of the parts that we ordered from Torma. Uh, came in late yesterday, I was a little nervous because the tracking system showed three packages coming and then the morning of it said that, hey, Tormach recalled one of them and I was all you know, worried. It's like, hey, you know, where's my stuff? Uh, I think they actually made a mistake. The two packages that came contained everything that I had ordered. I made a mistake, or actually I didn't catch a mistake. So when I placed my order, I used uh, some of the bundles and kits that they that they um, they have in there. And when you place an order through Tormark, Tor what you're really doing is you're placing an order, and unless you're swiping a credit card and paying for it right then, you're requesting a quote, which typically you're going to do anyways because you need to know what the shipping is, right? So you request you request the quote, they send you the quote, everything's good, you pay for it, right? On my quote, I had done, or on my, in my shopping cart, I had done the accessories kit for the lathe. Um, on my quote, I did not notice that um, the full accessories kit was not actually on the quote. Uh, it looked like it was there, but I was doing so much paperwork at that point that I missed it. And so one uh, option I had, uh, in the, the uh, accessories kit uh, for the, I guess it's accessory kit two, for the lathe. It's supposed to come with the T-slots and gang tooling. Um, and for whatever reason, it didn't make it over to the quote. And so when I placed my order, I didn't order that, uh, that piece of equipment. Uh, that being said, it's not a showstopper, but it is where I had planned to put the bar puller. Um, however, at least initially, I could probably put the bar puller in the, the turret. Um, what's really cool about the bar puller is it can run either off of air or off of coolant. And so, kind of neat, you know, kind of nice. The turret system's got coolant uh, plumbed to each tool. I can just use the standard, what was it, M8, M9 command for coolant on and off, and that'll, you know, open and close the jaws. Me making funny hand gestures here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, so it, it'll still work out. It'll be fine. Um, I will eventually order that uh, that tool. That was it was a mistake on Tormach's part initially, a mistake on my part because I didn't catch it. Right, so I'm not going to blame them. I'm the one that's supposed to be you know reviewing this stuff, so I'll take full responsibility for that one. Uh, I did get a couple of parts that didn't work right. Um, the key, keyboard and jog shuttle f that came with the lathe. Uh, the keyboard, one strip of, like, well, it's actually two, two rows of keys going kind of diagonally, uh, weren't working. I noticed that when I went to first set it up. Hey, you know what? This kind of stuff happens. I, I work in the electronics industry and, it, and you know, technology education. This stuff happens, right? Um, same thing with that jog wheel. I'm not sure what's going on. I swapped things around. I put it on the 440. I verified. Yeah, it really is the hardware. I just gotta call the support, you know, we'll get it straightened out, it won't be a big deal. Um, today though, I'm posed with a new challenge, and I know I've been talking for an awful long time, uh, but I'm posed with a new challenge here. Do I keep working on the lathe because the oiler's in, and then I can do the shimming of the, the um, turret, or do I put the coolant, the flood coolant system on the mill and get the mill up and running? And I'm a little torn, but I think if I apply a little bit of backwards planning and logic here, um, it will all make sense. So I know that by the end of the week, I need to be making um, some pins. Now we've redesigned that pin that I did the mill turning uh, video on. So I'll, I'll put that uh, link up. I think it's probably gonna be up here, but um, I'll put that in the, in the video. If you guys haven't seen that pin. Um, that pin, I've been doing some work with a, a local company. It's also my friend and mentor's company, um, but uh, Prolock. Uh, they do accessories for weightlifting equipment. And those pins were actually the prototypes we were doing for a brand new product line. Uh, we realized that we can streamline that process and um, uh, 
make it a, just a whole lot more efficient. I'm not, not just making the pins, but uh, cost effective as well. So we redesigned the pins. I'd like to be making some of those pins for updated prototypes by the end of the week. Okay, so if I'm working backwards, and this is my military training here, if I'm working backwards, to do that, I've got to have, I have to have the lathe up and running. Uh, to do that, I need to have the oiler in place, the, the, um, the turret aligned and shimmed as I'm doing weird hand things again. And I need to have the collet closer uh, working. Well, the collet closer piece, uh, I ordered all of the parts for the, the pneumatic collet closer um, setup uh, that uh, G made CNC did. Uh, Patrick did a great job on that. Again, I put uh, links in the, uh, for that video. I'll put it up again anyway. I'll put a card up for you guys. Um, those parts should be here in a couple of days. So I could get the lathe up and running today, put the collet uh, closer system on it, and manually opening and closing collet start making parts. But I also need to make that bracket for the pneumatic collet closer. So it's like, hey, why not start with the mill, get the mill finished, get that thing making, you know, make that bracket that I need, go ahead and get the bracket on and ready, or get things ready to go so that when the rest of the parts come in this week, I can just get the lathe fully up and running and I'll have one working machine, you know, where I can start working on some other stuff. So that's the direction I'm headed this week. Um, again, it's a really busy week for me as well. Uh, Work-wise, day job-wise, I've got a lot going on during the day which only leaves me a few hours uh, each evening. I'm just trying to spend time with family uh, you know, during that time as well. So I'm really only getting a couple of hours a night where I can work on this stuff. Uh, so, um, All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video. Um, wasn't a whole lot other than just, just some planning and as you can see in the background, I might pan you over. Uh, we got a lot done in preparation. Um, the next couple of days is when uh, we'll get a, we'll actually get the the project work out. Um, seemed like every day this week there was something that changed the plan. The plan is you know, going into this week, and this is a great illustration of what what happens uh, during during any <laughs> normal week. The plan was, this week was to get the mill fully up and running, machine the bracket I need, all the parts came in for the pneumatic collet closer, and get the, the lathe fully functional. Uh, reality hit. Parts came in just fine. You know, everything was good there. Uh, the day job levels went up real high. Didn't get a bunch of stuff done. Uh, because I, was, I ended up doing quite a bit more with the day job. My back was flaring up on me, so uh, that slowed me down. Uh, and frankly, I needed to, to clean and rearrange and do a few things before I actually put the collet closer and all that uh, stuff on the, um, on the machine. So, <laughs> it's funny. Um, I know I'm gonna go back and edit this video and go, hey, you know, we're gonna do all these things this week, and now I'm at the end of the week. Uh, it's early, early morning Friday. I'm getting ready to start my day. I'm getting ready to head into my office, and I've got a meeting coming up here. But I wanted to wrap up this video and get get a video out. And you know, it's like this this kind of stuff happens, right? So um, you know, today is my wife's birthday. Um, she is so supportive. I mean, just a wonderful, wonderful woman. And, um, you know, so uh, while I do want to get some stuff done in here, um, really today is my day to uh, just, you know, show her some some extra love and attention. Not that you shouldn't do that every day, but uh, especially today, you know. Um, and then uh, we're heading right into the, the bash. So, um, yeah. This will get up and running. I, I'll show some, I should have some project video uh, that I'll shoot this weekend. It's Father's Day weekend, so I'll be able to uh, <clears throat> at least throw the Father's Day card out there a little bit and, and go from there. So uh, anyways, um, last thing, looks like the mill is back up for sale. So um, I'm taking, I, I will take offers on, on the mill. Um, there's, you know, originally when I when I made the video and put it out, I I, I said um, 
you know, twenty eight hundred dollars or, uh, or or best offer. So uh, you know, there's it's the mill, the computer, the all, the mill itself isn't the really expensive part. It's all the stuff that went on to it. You know, the the it's got the um, uh, CNC fusion uh, hardware on it for the conversion kit. It's got a Probotics Monster Mill uh, electronics kit. So the, the stepper motors are from Probotics as well as the controller. Uh, you know, like I said, there's a computer monitor. There's a um, three-inch vise, which is you know size appropriate for that machine. Um, and uh, you know maybe maybe I can throw in some you know, some tooling or something like that as well. But uh, let me know if you're you're interested in that. I know there were a few people who had reached out to me about the mill, and um, it had already been uh, been spoken for at that point. But uh, that that situation has changed, and so um, it's. Back on the market, this stuff happens, not a big deal. Uh, so if anybody's interested, let me know. Uh, it is actually crated up and ready to ship if we need to. Uh, if there's somebody local, I live near Raleigh, North Carolina. If there's somebody who wants to pick it up themselves, that's that's fine too. But it's, it's crated and ready to ship. Uh, so um, just let me know. Thanks. And uh, oh, last thing. Since this video is all talk, 10 minutes of me talking. Sorry, guys. Um, I do want to say... Uh, uh, a special thanks to uh, those of you supporting me, uh, either through Patreon page, uh, the stickers. Um, I do still have some stickers left. Uh, the sticker, stickers available on the website. Um, although it means whatever, you know, I put some aside specifically uh, for the bash. But uh, um, I, just in general, I'm going to have to edit all this. But I just want to say thanks because everybody's supportive, not just... You know that way. You know, I get such great comments, such great feedback uh, on here, on social media, you know, Instagram and Facebook and you know, Twitter, um, and I just want to say thanks. You know, every day, uh, every day is a blessing. You know, you're you're not uh, you're not guaranteed that next day, and so um, for me, I just I try to every day to to remember a little bit about to. Um, Things that I'm thankful for, and one of those is, is uh, the support of you guys. So, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I may or may not edit. I don't know. We'll see what... Uh, let's, let's make this a surprise, and we'll see what, what comes out. Thanks, guys. See you soon.